girl, 35 weeks old. Edna had Zika when she was two months pregnant, and up until now, everything had been okay. But Dr. Adriana Melo tells her the baby's head is a bit smaller than it should be. The news all mothers are afraid to hear. This hospital is where pregnant women who had Zika are being sent to find out if their baby has any kind of malformation. So this is a moment of truth. They either leave here relieved or will have to undergo further exams. Of the 17 women examined this afternoon, 16 were cleared. Edna was the only one to go home with the risk of microcephaly still looming. She tells me she'll be calmer after the next scan, but she's very nervous now and worried. Dr. Adriana Melo was a pioneer in establishing a link between Zika and microcephaly, the first to find the virus in the amniotic fluid of two cases. She shows a difference between the brain of a healthy fetus on the right and then the one on the left where all the lighter area in the middle is fluid. There's nothing in his brain, she says. Instead of microcephaly alone, she says what these babies have should be called congenital Zika syndrome. We've been seeing a wide range of cases. Sometimes it's just a smaller head or isolated spots of calcification. But there are graver cases where some brain structures are absent and muscles and joints have contractures. This hospital set up a special unit for microcephaly. The mothers are like old friends. This is part of their new routine. They are all low-income families and won't be able to go back to work. These children will demand all their attention. I had four girls and had asked God for a boy. He sent a special child, so I believe I'm special too for taking care of him. Nothing will keep me from giving him a future. He is my life. Edna will need another scan to find out about her child's health. In the meantime, she goes home with a threat faced by pregnant women across the country that Zika may harm her baby. Julia Carneiro, BBC News, Campina Grande, Paraná.